Hey everybody, before we start our show today, we need to tell you all about our latest and greatest sponsor that we have. Ooh, can't wait. We are, of course, talking about Shave Click. Shave Click. They are sponsoring this week's episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons. And so I cannot maintain this close of a shave in any way, shape, or form. And Dave is unable to, to maintain his, his boyish good looks without shave click yeah and you know what you know what's great about shave click like honestly shaving is probably the most difficult thing in the world i'm not exaggerating the worst. I'm not exaggerating it's the most difficult thing in the world ladies you know what i'm talking about gentlemen i know you hear me shave click simplifies everything because you don't even have to pick up a razor at this point anymore if you want to shave you literally click and it's done it's magic of the internet you go online, you set up a webcam, you log in. All you got to do is click the spots that you want shaved, and it's taken care of. It's like actual magic. Also, lasers. And if you're interested, head over to shaveclick.com slash SMC and type in the coupon code MORNING. Remember, that's MORNING with a U for your free absolutely nothing. It doesn't Come exist. on, guys. It's not a real thing. We don't want to do these ads, and we want to keep this show advertisement-free as much as possible. So if you're interested in supporting the show, please head over to patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Cartoons for the price of one cup of coffee a month. That's a month. You spend hundreds of dollars in coffee. Oh, we're, asking for, we're asking for one cup of coffee a month. It helps to support high-quality podcasting like Saturday Morning Cartoons. So that's patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Cartoons. Thank you, guys. And now, on, on with, with the, the show. show. Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you from Ocean Shores, California, I'll be your surfer dude, Dave Trombor. Joining me as always, all the way from the shore shack, the radical Sean Paul Ellis. How's it going, Sean? Haha, <laughs> David, David, David. I'm doing well, bro. How about yourself? <laughs> I can't even, I honestly can't even do like the surfer. It's just going to sound a mess. It's going to sound <laughs> like an undercover old man trying to infiltrate like a surfer gang. What is up, my bras? <laughs> How are you hang? It's just Steve Buscemi. Yes. <laughs> just trying to be a kid <laughs> from 30 t- Rock. <laughs> just creeping around. What's going on, somewhere. my fellow children? <laughs> Hello, my fellow children. Even if Steve, uh, I can't yeah. imagine Steve Buscemi ever looked normal or fit in. He doesn't seem like a person that was ever, ever allowed to look like a normal background person. You know, you and think? I think that that's what makes Buscemi so amazing yes. is that he, he just, he sticks out, uh, which makes everybody accept him, which makes him beloved. Yeah, we'll go with that. He's beloved because he's a weird looking dude. <laughs> I think he's great. I think he's a good actor as well. Oh, I so. love him. I love him to death. Uh, he has nothing it's to a... do with tonight's Nicktoons. Oh, uh, uh, what? No, as far as oh, I know. Oh, fuck. No. As far as I know, not involved in Rocket Power, which Sean is going to tell you about the history of this particular <laughs> Nicktoon right about now. Uh, Rocket Power is an American animated television series created by Arlene Klasky and Gabor Chupko. The series ran on Nickelodeon for four seasons, and 71 episodes were produced between 1999 and 2004. In 2014, Shout Factory released all four seasons of the series on DVD. How about that? Shout Factory. Scooping up them Nicktoons left and right. If you remember from last week, they also had the Wild Thornberries. They had all 90 Smashing. out of 91 episodes released. Smashing. We're going to find that one episode, and it's going to be like our holy grail at this point. Is it, though? I mean, the equivalent of cartoon holy grail. Oh, okay. It's a low bar, apparently. The yeah, missing pilot of the Wild Thornberries <laughs> is equivalent to Life <laughs> Everlasting. The missing pilot? Was this like our Amelia Earhart? Yeah, it's the Amelia Earhart oh. of cartoons oh. of holy that- grails. Of holy grit. Oh, oof, that just got real complicated. It's a me. very complicated setup. But what's not complicated is the synopsis of Rocket Power. <laughs> Rocket Power involves the, Take it daily, away, Dave. the daily situations of a group of friends as they spend their free time playing extreme sports, such as surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding, and more. The series is set in the fictional town of Ocean Shores, California. Otto and Reggie live with their strict but loving dad, Raymond Raimundo Rocket, 
who along with his business partner, retired surfer and self-styled philosopher Tito Makani, runs a snack bar called Shore Shack, where the kids usually hang out. In most episodes, they get involved in competitions, but end up learning that their friendship is more important than winning. In other words, the adults lie to them. So that's rocket power in a nutshell there. Uh, yeah, it's basically just like a bunch of little kids playing extreme sports. And every time we say that, you have to drink, by the way. Oh, man. Sorry. But yeah, so it's, uh, it's kids living in California, just hanging out, brah. And just... Uh, oh, so it's just... It's just kids uh, living in anywhere town USA doing cool young kid things. It's like, what is it, Dog and Z-Boys? Something like that? Did I just combine two surfer documentaries into one thing? Z-Town. So. Z-Town and the Dog Boys? Z-Town. Dog Town and the Z-Boys? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you go with I told this. you, I'm an even, old man. I don't even want to correct you. Z, Z-Money and the Backwoods Drifters. That's it. It's, Lord, it's Lords of Dog Town. Lords of Dog Town is one. About I don't even know what the... I don't know what the Z Boys one they're, is. That they're you're making in there. noise. Oh my god! For Ziv Zoolander, I'm losing Zip. it. The worlds are colliding. Let's just get back into cartoons where I understand things and I know the way <laughs> things work. <laughs> I, 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 I almost need to start this by saying we need to begin this episode by saying like Dave, did you, with the, at the rate that you are having trouble concentrating on some of this. Do you need helmets, a wrist guard, knee pads, elbow pads, everything? I mean, I'm concerned about your safety. Yeah, it probably can't hurt at this point. I might have bumped my head a few too many times trying to do an ollie. Is that what the kids do? Sure. Ollie on the half pipe? You know, okay, do you know what any of these things mean? Tony Hawk? <laughs> You're just throwing out words now. Bam Margera? <laughs> too much you've strayed you've strayed very very far now at this <laughs> point not too much but you're like you're one step away from just saying and shrugging x games x games you're like yeah mountain dew fair. damn it all right nailed it got it all right let's get into this sucker Man. and we're gonna start with right. the same thing we do every week the theme song last week's didn't really have a theme song we kind of had exposition for a half a minute and then some weird noises for the other 30 seconds this one was more of a traditional theme song not saying it's better or worse but it's more of an actual song. So what do you think about uh, the theme song to Rocket Power? So I want to begin this conversation by making two distinctions. Is that one is the music that was performed, right. and the second is the visuals that we were subjected to. <laughs> okay. The song itself, I don't have a problem with. Okay. And I, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm middle of the road on it. I did not love it. I did not it okay. i know that it was uh it was composed uh and then performed by some rather famous people yeah uh and so surprisingly we had, uh, th- for the surprisingly, quality of this song yeah right so i'm i'm middle of the road on the song itself but where i take major offense is the actual visuals that we were subjected to. And I say subjected because twice, yeah. I, I, watched, I watched this theme song twice to really sort of get the, the full energy that comes with it. And do you remember that, that pivotal point, like in the early 2000s, where Pokemon had sort of, or maybe it was in the, the like mid late to 90s, late yeah. 90s, where Pokemon came on the scene and there, people were just flipping out because they're just like, do not watch the intro to this show because there's the potential oh, the epilepsy warning. or the high probability yeah where the, there's an epilepsy warning because things are moving so fast and i was just like have we not seen the intro for rocket power this is this is a, this is epilepsy See, I, this I didn't it, like think it was i didn't think it was that bad now granted go back and watch the the simpsons episode with the super seizure inducing robots and then go sure. watch one of uh, Kanye West's latest videos. I think it's uh, what all the lights or something like that, where there's yeah. literally an epilepsy seizure warning at the, be- <laughs> at the beginning of the music video, which I haven't seen since Pokemon and anime uh, <laughs> back in the back in the late '90s. I didn't think it was that bad. I thought the editing and the choice of shots was not great, but I didn't think it was like seizure inducing. I, I I felt at no point in time was there an interesting or a good visual that was displayed for us. Uh, they continued to kind of show the kids, but then they'd show the negative of that image. Yeah. Uh, and like and a then freeze frame or like a... But the, and they'd freeze for a second, and then it would almost like it was glitching on purpose. Yeah. It would sort of jump back and forth between like regular composure and like the negative, and it would just flash back and forth. And you're just like, oh, please, 
please stop this. Whatever you're doing, just please do not do this anymore. You know what they were doing? And then it gets to... What were they doing? Extreme sports. God damn it. Drink. <sighs> they get to this one point where one of the characters, Reggie, kind of like comes up to the screen and there's like a scr- there's like a picture in picture in front of her and it kind of stops and then she just kind of jostles it back and forth <laughs> and the whole screen just shakes with it like you're on some shaky cam that some low budget uh like kind of earth catastrophe movie filmmaker was just like oh i'm gonna put a gopro on the on the side of my shoe and this you're was just like, like no this was don't like do that early, fucking knock it off early days gopro 90s cartoons I don't know when the hell GoPros came out, but I feel like it was after this, or at least around the same time as this. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. But I I feel like just because they took that extreme sports angle and they tried to port that over into the cartoon, it just doesn't quite work that well because it's a cartoon. I I think that if you had actually, if you actually watched moments of extreme sports happening, like if it was something that was going on, something that felt, I mean, like, this theme song and the visuals are very active mm-hmm. and there's a lot of uh, energy that's behind it, but I don't feel like any of it is there in order to, to really kind of connect you to the show in any way and sort of focus you in terms of like understanding what this show is going to be about. It's there to sort of like wake you up, like jostle your hair a little bit, tussle you a bunch. It's like, this theme song is an older brother putting you in a headlock and giving you a noogie and then just being like, oh, I'm going to go jump on the couch while I still have you in a headlock. And you're like, knock it off. This sucks. Like, just, it, it, I don't know. The biggest problem I had with this, aside from the music being middle of the road, mm-hmm. the visuals being absolute garbage from start to finish, all right? The lyrics that were being sung, yes, that, that, all oh, right? I'm with you there. These suck. This, at this point, I wanted to... After having sat through this twice, I really did not want to watch the rest of the show. In no way, shape, or form did this psych me up for this show. And here are the lyrics. We are riders on a mission. Action kids who blah, 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 blah. This is all indistinguishable chatter that you can't fucking make out with the human ear. It sounded, rocket power. Rocket power. It sounded like an like a early bad demo of like an Offspring track. That's what I. That's what I, I first heard, and I was just like, I don't like it, this, but okay. Even, yes. even Dexter Holland, if he recorded this shit, would just be like, nope, not even gonna do yeah, this. Was I'm gonna a, move on to Pretty Fly for a White Guy. At least I'm gonna have commercial success. This was awful. It was pretty bad, but I disagree that I. I feel like it does get the tone and the point of the, uh, the show across. You don't know who these kids are, but you know they're just like kids, and for whatever reason, they're skating and snowboarding and surfing around, and that's literally all the show is about. You're just watching kids kind of play these sports in their neighborhood and kind of like pal around together. That's it. And it's got that same kind of energy as the theme song. So I feel like the theme song did a good job of preparing you about what you're about to get into because uh, there wasn't really much substance beyond that. So Honestly, yeah. if given the opportunity to watch kids rollerblade or skateboard or surf, and these are all things that I suck at, yeah. versus actually going out and doing those activities <laughs> outside, I would 100% choose doing these activities that I suck at, knowing full well that I suck at them, and then I'm going to hurt myself as opposed to watching this intro music. The great thing about this show is that there's like a reunion show 40 years later where they're all like drug Shut addicts up. and they've got broken bones and they've got mental problems because they hit their heads too many times. And <laughs> it's a really sad reunion. Rocket Power reunion. Check it out. It's a really I'm going to be honest one. with you. I would watch. I'd watch, watch the shit that. out of that. Just like I'd drug watch the shit out of that. former extreme sports stars <laughs> with moderator Tony Hawk. If it was done with something where they had like a, like a real world professional booth and they were just oh, yeah. like the entire, yo, every time they called me squid, I used to just fucking do heroin. I'd be like, oh uh, yeah, well that makes sense. That totally That's how makes this sense. show is fucking yeah. set up. And then the weird thing is in that confessional, Reggie and uh, squid actually hook up like on camera. It was really disturbing. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done this. I don't think I've ever given uh, a theme song a rating, but I would give this in the negative 100% of the time. Wow, negative 100%. <laughs> negative 100%. Yeah. That's literally don't as use bad my, as, as bad Don't as use my bad. fucking math against me on me, Dave. <laughs> no, I'd like your phrasing. In the negative 100% of the time. 60% of the, of the time, time, it works every time. Uh, there Sex, is a bright man. side to this theme song, though. Who was it composed by, and who was it performed uh. by? So, 
the theme song it's so, well it's performed uh by the wipeouters right. which is devo yeah wipeouters doesn't sound uh, like so, much of anything sounds like a fake surf <laughs> rock band which because it kind of was because right. it was devo yeah. in disguise i feel like this is like when somebody contractually can't publish work as their actual band name right. because it's owned by the because they're they're con they're contracted through a label and they can't do that so they're just like hey it's it's us anyway we'll just change our name for this one release, right, guys? I think, and they were like, yeah, great, the Wipeouters. So I think Mother's Ball was actually, was he a member of Devo? I thought, I thought Mark Mother's Ball was... I thought he was a yeah. member of Devo, so there's obviously that connection. But then the Wipeouters did actually release like a surf rock album. So I don't know if it was one of these things where they were contracted to do this or Mother's Ball was contracted to do it and he, he just brought the band in and then they were like, oh, that was kind of fun. It's a different sound for us. Let's just release a surf rock album. So I don't know. I don't know how that all worked out, but it's honestly Mother's Ball and Devo is the best part of this theme song because the rest of it's pretty much hot trash. But uh, I will disagree and I will say it does let you know what kind of show you're about to get into, which we're about to get into. We are going to be talking about <laughs> season one, episode one, which is split into two parts, new squid on the block and down the drain. Um, you want to run through these, just the four main characters real quick. So people know who we're talking about briefly. Sure. So who's our main, have who's a, our main vein guy? Uh, Auto rocket. Auto rocket. It's O T T O not a U T O like auto fire a rocket. I, I don't know. Auto rocket. <sighs> I, I'm having a, already. every time, every time I say these names, of these characters, I'm just like, well, you know what? Just give up i love that their just, last name had to be rocket like it couldn't just be called rocket power because that's a cool name like they couldn't just call themselves no. the rockets because again a cool name no the kids had to be called rocket for whatever Cause reason dad because dad had to make some poor choices back in the surf community when he was competing I guarantee that he did and this and that surname translated down into exactly what he is now so i mean what are you gonna do everybody's a rocket what are you gonna do family rockets speaking yeah, of we do have a family because otto has a sister he does. We have a Regina or Reggie Rocket. Reggie Rocket. Because we absolutely need alliteration in here. We have, uh, we, uh, and, and rounding this out, we have two friends. Right. Um, we, have, uh, we have Sam Squid Dullard. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> that name. Poor kid. Uh, and we also have uh, Maurice Twister Rodriguez. And we'll explain a little bit about their names here as we get into this first episode because Originally, Twister was referred to as the Squid until episode one, New Squid on the Block, which is where a special guest shows up, which we'll get into oh. right about now. <laughs> All right. So what's after our actual like introduction song? What is our first exposure to the world of rocket power and the town of, what is it, uh, Ocean Shores, California? Ocean Shores, California. So, they, uh, so they're just... It's just three kids. We've got Twister, Otto, and Reggie, and they're in a backyard on a half pipe, and uh, Reggie's filming them, and uh, Otto and Twister are, are trying to, to do some, some sick moves uh, on the pipe uh, as Reggie is recording and, and taping them. She's doing all of this because she's trying to publish a zine. Oh, my God. And Within say, 10 and seconds. I, I want to say yeah. everything that I said, trying to do sick skateboard tricks on a pipe for a zine is a very old sentence for somebody <laughs> my age to make. <laughs> like, Literally almost 20 years it's, ago. <laughs> it's weird how we can watch old cartoons and the dialogue doesn't seem that out of place. Like there are very few things that really stick out where you're like, nobody says that anymore or that's not a thing that exists anymore. This, like literally the first line of dialogue is Reggie and she goes, hello, I'm shooting frame grabs for the zine, remember? Every like every other word in that sentence is so late '90s and early 2000s that I just want to like I want to erase that from my memory. The way she says "hello," frame grab. I've never heard somebody say frame grab to begin with. I've never heard. Of I've frame heard grab screenshots. Before. I've heard that... screen grabs. I've never heard frame grabs. But okay. Yeah. And then zines. Also. Yeah. Also, at that point, I, you know, I, I, like, I, do you have any exposure with zines? I remember hearing it once, just being like, the fuck was that? And then it went away within like a year or two, I thought. Okay. So there was a place that was in Pittsburgh that I used to go and see concerts uh, because they would do, they do uh, local bands uh, that weren't touring that just wanted stage time and exposure. And the place was called Mr. Roboto Project. Yeah. And they, had a, they happened to have a lot of like hardcore bands that were there. And so 
uh, a bunch of people who were on my floor, uh, a couple of them were in bands, so every once in a while I'd go there and I'd check it out. And they had these zines that were there, you know, and if you're unfamiliar with a yes, zine, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where it's just, it's a, it's somebody who's really interested in a, in a particular scene and they're putting out sort of a magazine that kind of documents and talks about the goings on and the things that are, are within their community, the things that they're passionate about, uh, things that you should be aware about if you're a member of the scene so that you can get involved, you can take action. But it's like a short, edgy version of a magazine. And the word magazine is super long and complicated, so it's just a zine. You know, but like I had, I had friends that were putting these things yeah. out, that were, were doing these things, and this was in 99. Uh, like my my freshman year of college, and people were doing this and putting it out, and, and like they were they were interesting, and you know a lot of it was sometimes like handwritten or or pieces of it were done like in what looked like a MS Publisher, yeah. you know, like from maybe a carryover activity that they had from high school when they were putting together a yearbook or some crap like that, and, and you know to to their point and to their credit, you know they were doing something that really nobody was asking for, but they were they were spotlighting interesting things that were going on and they were documenting certain things that were there. And so it was kind of cool in that sense. Did I ever really read one? No, exactly. somebody probably, somebody probably handed me one and I probably was just like, Oh, cool. Trash. Toilet paper. You know? <laughs> like, and like, like, and like, you know, I, I mean, I looked at a couple of the ones that they had, but I mean, for a majority of what I read at that time, it was all black and white and it was very, very hard uh, to sometimes make out, the printing because yeah. in cases they would just be photocopied yeah. you know there would be an original that would be photocopied yeah. multiple times this is extremely low budget shit yeah. what these kids are doing like they're in they're in a homemade skate park in their backyard <laughs> with a video camera all right and they're talking about oh you know i'm gonna put together the zine i'm gonna do it on my computer i'm like okay like oh right on there you well, go you're, do, you're they, real they do make a joke about that, though, because there are multiple like jokes that come back to the computer later on. But apparently it's taken Reggie like months, if not years, to be doing this. It's like six months for her to put the zine yeah. out. And people are calling uh, her dedication to putting this out into question right. at this point. Right. Also, this is 99. I don't know about you, but like this was the prime time era of uh, like uh, uh, VHS the tapes that oh, had cool. I Stop tried. it. They, it was really cool. It was a great time where people would, were like getting handheld cams and they were recording like awesome fucking skate tricks that people were doing. Yeah. And then it was sort of like a word of mouth. Like you'd go over to a friend's house and they'd have a copy of like a, what was it? Like Camp Kill Yourself, you know, which was like a notable, like it was one of those things that like kind of ran parallel to all the stuff that we know uh, that became jackass, oh, okay. you know? And like these were guys that like they would like some of it was like pranks and some of it was like skate park stuff. Uh, and it was a lot of them just doing tricks. And like those things were awesome to watch because those people were so fucking talented at skating. They were so much better. And they were just like, fuck it. We're going to risk every part of our body yeah. to get this sick shot. And in my case, I'm just like, oh, no, I really like having tendons and bone. I'll just be here behind so, the camera recording <laughs> it. So. I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to be here on a friend's couch with his PlayStation doing Tony Hawk. And I'm just like, sweet, no side grind. I don't know what that is, but I got a bunch of points. Or like, just watching Rocket Power, which is apparently what little kids did in the early, late 1999, 90s. Early absolutely 2000s. not. Absolutely not fucking watching this show. I, I, this Somebody show. had to watch it because it was on for four years. Maybe it was kids like Sam. I bring all this up yeah. to say in transition that zines are real things. What Reggie is doing is a bullshit zine. <laughs> I'm calling her scenester credibility into fucking question wow. right now. I did not think we were like, going to A, talk about zines that much on this episode or ever again, or B, call out a cartoon character for her amateur zine manufacturing process. <laughs> like the hipster of zines over there. I'm impressed. I mean, you know what? If that's what it takes to expose the lies in this show, Fair enough. I will happily take that crowd. Fair enough. I will say it's interesting that this entire episode kind of like has that zine idea as its focus, which is very strange. It's also like the surfer language that these kids are throwing around was very just kind of off-putting to me. It felt like I wasn't quite speaking the same language and I didn't know if these kids were like mentally challenged. It was a weird, <laughs> it's a weird gray area for me. So I don't know. But we've got these three kids and they're hanging out. And then lo and behold, what always happens in these types of series, right? We have a new kid who shows up. 
Now, this new kid's like super cool looking, isn't he? What do you got? Right. Well, it's not that he's he's super cool. He's he's a little bit. I mean, we already mentioned his last name is Dullard. Dullard. Like Dullard. You don't get any like you don't get any lackluster as a character <laughs> with a name like Dullard. I mean, you know, you you've got literally nowhere to go at that point than up. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's so like rocket that, that hurts. You, you, you are starting, you were starting at the bottom and you were always fighting an uphill battle. For the rest of the well, time. here, so, here's, yeah. okay. So here's your fashion choice. If you're like a short kind of heavy kid named Sam Dullard, right? Uh, sure. You should wear a baggy shirt with a giant red N on it. All right. And like Jenko jeans. Well, you know, Jenko jeans were in style for that, but I mean, yeah, to his and that point, was he just moved right. in. Just moved in. Did not unpack his shorts yet, Dave. He so didn't unpack his born shorts yet. Let's give this kid a little bit of credit. Out. But he does have a computer, so now the other kids are super interested. But not interested. This was like a, a weird switch because they were not interested enough to actually go talk to this kid who was literally right across the street. They just went and went uh, elsewhere to like go play somewhere, and they just left this kid alone. I, I really thought they were just going to go up and talk to him <laughs> and like make friends or whatever. That is not what happened. We meet this weirdo character. Who shows up next? Do you remember uh, Violet Stimpleton? Yeah, Violet Stimpleton. Tell me about she Violet. Is the, she is the, uh, the one woman welcome wagon of, uh, of this city. And so she, <laughs> this beach town. So she comes over and, and makes an introduction to Sam. And she immediately is just like, you know what? Let me, let me take you around and, and <laughs> let me show all the residents that are on the street. Let me, let, me, uh, let me introduce you to a bunch of people. So no, no, I, lo- I love it, is- though, because she's just like, hi, I'm a strange adult woman here in this town you just moved to. Let me kidnap your child for a while and show him to other strangers who are also adults. Yeah, you know, we and talked about this like, last week. Totally we fine. just have a lot of Nicktoon kidnapping yeah. Stockholm Syndrome that happens all the time, whether you're Donnie or Darwin the, the ape or Sam Duller. Kids are going to get kidnapped parents in, don't care. in Nicktoon. Parents do not care. Uh, Guys, we're in the late 90s, early 2000s danger zone of Nicktoon kidnapping right now. Yeah. And so this is challenging. It is challenging. I don't know how else, don't know how else to say this. we got this, another but... Jean Bonnet Ramsey waiting in the wings here on Nicktoons. Oh, no. Took a real dark turn. Now, Violet's, I mean, she's not a, a serial killer as far as I know. She seems like a normal-ish person. She's just kind of weird. And the first place she takes Sam is to her, like, garage, <laughs> our basement hobby area, <laughs> which is also strange. But she's got she's to introduce her to uh, her, her husband oh, yeah. and a uh, uh, retired uh, electrical engineer, Merv. Because when you're a um, new kid in town, the first people you want to meet are the weird one-woman welcome wagon and her train, model train-obsessed husband, Merv, who like hides out in the right. basement. These are the first two people but you want to make contact with. And, and what you also want to be, what you also want to bear witness to is... Uh, a wife insulting her retired husband by calling all of the shit that he's doing in his garage just toys. I'm like, the second she said that, and you like, he piped up and kind of like shook his fist for two seconds. Yeah, I was like, oh no, what's what's happening here? Like, he, we've already had a kidnapping. He backhanded this her right in front of be... Sam, and then he told Jesus. Sam to keep his mouth shut if he knew what was good for him. It's a really rough episode, right out of the gate. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I would have rather watched the ideas that we're having for this episode than what we actually watched. Wouldn't we normally though? This is usually how it works. Like, <laughs> I actually do like. I do like how Sam and Merv kind of found a connection because I was not expecting that. So it's it's kind of cool when they write something in that like, oh, it's a little curveball. Basically, Merv is showing off his small model home, which is it's a model of his home, but it's also a mailbox. So it's just a smaller right. version of his house, which is an overly complicated, overly engineered mailbox but it's not quite working right there's a lot of mechanisms and gears and gizmos that happen inside it but it's not working so sam says oh why don't you use like a 900 megahertz motor or 900 megahertz controller and then you'll be able to overcome like you have a stronger signal or whatever there was a lot of pseudo gibberish techno babble in these two mini episodes that we watched but Uh. basically they made a they made a connection on like the tech side of things so they were okay at that point and i I want to be very clear that as a technologist uh, this was as infuriating oh, as watching an episode of 24 where they're just like, Boop. we need to find the GPS, or GPS coordinates. Boop. And somebody just goes, oh, well, we'll just we'll hack Boop. the header file Boop. and we'll read in there. And I'm just like, what the fuck are you actually talking about? It, like, oh, God. There's some there's some That's real good ones in the second episode. Sam has some um, real I know. good ones. I know. I know. Because th- this 
whole thing was just somebody had somebody heard a bunch of buzzwords yep. at a conference yep. and was just like, you know what? I'm gonna go write a Nicktoon. And my response is go fuck yourself. Well, that's what Sir Freeman said in our last week's episode too. So you're you're not alone there. Uh so Violet at this point takes Sam to meet quote unquote the Rockets. Now here's the Rockets. here's where some more uh, extreme sports buzz speak uh, comes in because they're like working on their skateboards. They're like, these trucks are too loose. And they say something else. And they're like, putting stickers on your board doesn't qualify as work, stupid. And they're just like throwing these zing zine zingers back and forth while they're working on their boards. Ooh, ooh that zine zinger. Uh, Violet yeah. walks Sam. Also, yeah. also, if you're writing a zine, it should really be a community of people that you're trying. Like, they're not talking with no, anybody else. No, literally the three of them. Care. And now plus one. These are, the, these are the three most self-centered assholes that they could have written a Nicktoon around. And then all of a sudden they were just like, and one of them is like, I hate my nickname of Squid. And so, which is never really explained well, why Squid is a bad nickname. Well, but it does, it does come up briefly that, uh, so obviously the Rocket siblings knew each other before. And then when Twister came along, they named him Squid for whatever reason, I guess because he's a new kid. So they keep calling him Squid, but they also call him Twister at the same time. And then he keeps right. complaining that they call him Squid. And it was literally just to set up what happens later on in the episode. But it's not explained why that's like a name for a new kid. I think other than Klasky and Chupo, there are other people who worked on development of this show. So I don't know if they had any background in like the extreme sports um, oh. arena or not, but it seems like they might have. And that's why they tried to like work some of these, uh, some of these things in. Maybe, maybe some of this I talk f- is from, pulled from that or some of these names. I don't know. I feel like, again, they had as much knowledge about extreme sports as they did about actually technology. Fair. It was like a bunch of buzzwords that they heard somewhere, and they were just like, ah, oh, you know what? I'm going to go write a Nicktoon. Fuck you. However, there's a really good, uh, I know you're going to love it, really good computer joke coming up soon, because now Sam is meeting the Rockets, and they're basically just like grilling him on who he is, how much he weighs, how old he is, where he's from, what his blood type is, what his particular sexual fetishes are, and uh, nice. what kind of sports they have in Kansas. Turns out, not really anything. There's no surfing, obviously. There's no snowboarding, because it's just flat as hell. Too flat. Too flat. But there is some roller hockey. Too flat. There is some roller hockey. Oh, yeah. So Sam maybe yeah. has an edge there. We're not sure yet. But right about here is where uh, Sam and Reggie start talking to each other, and Reggie lets him know that she's making her zine. And Sam inquires what kind of computer she has. What's she, what's she working on there? Oh, she's, got a, she's got a 486. <laughs> That actually made me laugh when she says, I have a 486. Doesn't make he's like, laugh? to publish a zine? Uh, yeah. Ugh. Did you hear what he said? Because he, like... he, st- he came back with a <laughs> sick burn. <laughs> what was it? Oh, he was like, you'd be better off using a rock and chisel. I was like, motherfucker, you just met these people. Like, he's up. But then he was like, I'll bring my laptop over and I'll help you out. He recoils when she says a 486. To publish the zine, like does. somebody just took a shit in his mouth. Like it's an extre- oh! extreme reaction. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so basically, he's going to uh, help her with the zine, and they are going to take him outside and beat the shit out of him at roller hockey. That seems like a fair trade, right? Yeah, and that's what they proceed to do. They bully him for the extent of the entire time that they're playing roller hockey. Twister intentionally trips Sam. Uh, and like sends him flying. And so they were just like, oh, I thought you were going to be better at this. And he's like, I stink. I'm not good at this. I'm like, I don't live on, like, I really wanted him to just vent and be like, I'm not you bunch of like concussed buffoons <laughs> living in a beach great. town with, with a combined yeah. IQ of two. I'd love to Between live. the three of you, like you fucking dum dums. Like I'm not that good at it. Guess what? It doesn't matter. I got my own shit that I'm going to do. Yeah. I got a laptop. Like, I got naked ladies all day long. Yeah, I got AOL. I got 900 free minutes of AOL time this I got, month. I got all these discs so, to go through. Yeah. <laughs> so, But I do like that Otto, debacle, Otto and Reggie do kind of stick, not necessarily stick up for Sam, but they do tell Twister he's being kind of an a-hole. Because Twister's like really right. riding this kid hard because he's like the new kid in town and he's going to steal some of his thunder. So he's really rubbing it in his face. And the other, the Rockets are like, all right, just ease up. You were a new kid once too, so just chill out. But nobody really so like lifts Sam it, up at this point yet. But this like whole trajectory of thought, this whole thought process makes zero sense to me. All right, Twister is the new kid, so they call him Squid. Right. 
Twister's the new kid, so he gets called Squid. Yep. And so in this instance, he is not allowing another new kid to join their posse who could take the title of Squid. It takes a little bit, but that idea finally sinks in. And then he's like, oh. It also helps that Sam has like a super innate ability to be an awesome goalie. Yes. Which comes up after. So, so let's, let's finish out the zine thing first, because that, that finishes up first. So uh, Sam's back at home after this whole uh, s- debacle zine with uh, roller hockey. And he is, uh, he's printing out the cover of Reggie's zine. So he goes to show Reggie. She is blown away at how great. Oh, because these screen grabs mm. look so dope. Um, they look so extreme. Uh, they're frame grabs. So, Get it right. Or oh, pay the price. What did I say? Screen, screen grabs? You said grabs? the right thing the instead of this wrong oh. thing. The show made of all wrong things. Oh, God. Really is. Uh, And so in this moment, uh, Otto and Twister, because they can't stop doing whatever they're doing for five seconds to to listen and have a conversation or talk to anybody, um, they Twister's just like, watch this trick shot, slaps Puck, like slap shots it, it ricochets off of a bunch of shit, and then it is barreling towards Reggie and Sam. And they call, like, heads up. And in this moment, just Sam just puts up his hand and just barehanded yeah. catches the puck and then just drops it like it's no big. That's pretty sweet. And everybody's just like, what? What? Now we got a new, so a new like, team member for the quad game. Oh, the quad God. game. So, the quad so game. So called because it's right. four did on you, four, I guess. Did, did you ever play? Yeah, it's four on four. Did you ever play roller hockey or street hockey? We played like sidewalk hockey because if we played street hockey, we would have been murdered at the age of like seven. But uh, okay, we played. We had a, we played we had a sidewalk. Lot of, we had a lot of cold. Okay, we had a lot of cul de sacs, yeah. and so I grew up on the like main cul de sac. The main streets. Yeah. Uh, but we would uh, we'd set up in these cul de sacs. At no point in time in like my four years of playing cul de sac hockey did anybody ever just say like. Thank God we got a quad no, I've game. I've never heard that on. term in my you life. Would have gotten, you would have gotten punched in the face and then pantsed in <laughs> front of everybody. For a quad game. It was always like a one-on-one or like a two-on-two. It was never whatever the fuck quad game yeah. even means. Or we just had like two people who were really good goalies and we'd put them in the net and then just everybody would just shoot on them. Yeah, that's fine. You too. know? Like it was, just, it was just a lot of practice. For people, yeah, so getting pummeled. It. Yeah. All right, so then we jump to this quad game which is just the younger kids the rockets twister and uh sam the new kid who are beating who was it twister's older brother twister's older brother twister's older brother and his friends in this quad game and they're literally they're beating them quite soundly so the older kids uh at at some point i think twister shoots the puck and it actually gets stuck in the what stimpleton's mailbox right so the older kids like oh you lost the puck you lose the game and they're like fuck you what are you talking about so here's where yeah. Sam uses his kind of like tech expertise again to somehow rig the controller to launch the puck back out of the mailbox. I mean, I, I'm glad that you portmanteaued that yeah. word, but I'm also disappointed with you, well, I but was, I'm also proud I was going to go with sex expertise, but we're talking about a young boy here, Sean, <laughs> and that would be inappropriate. What? And it makes no sense. Oh, so they shoot the puck man. back out. They eventually win the quad game. Nobody cares. Write a zine about it. The important thing to know is that Sam is now the new squid yeah. Everybody's psyched about it. The right. end. Even Sam. <laughs> Sam doesn't understand that evidently the squid connotation means that you're the new kid or you're the kid who's like not as good as everybody else. It sort of feels like a derogatory term that they're calling yeah. Twister for a majority of it, but Sam just owns it. It's just like, oh, you calling me squid? Oh, cool. I love it. He feels like he's part of the gang, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Now we spent a lot of time on that first uh, installment here. Let's let's knock out this second one. Let's mostly focus on the ridiculous things that Sam says, because none of them make any sense. And honestly, the plot is just kind of silly at this point too. So we could sum up yeah. the whole plot in saying Reggie should never have been given the opportunity to house it Agreed. because she's irresponsible, and this entire family is nuts. Or you can just call it hooligans throw a pool party. Uh, and that wraps it up too. <laughs> Extreme sports. So this or, one's... or you could say four kids destroy the foundation of a house. Yes, also, also accurate. <laughs> and deadbeat dad four kid, caught with his pants down. Four, four kids cause over $25,000 in structural damage yeah. to the basement of a house. Four hooligan children cause Ocean Shores, California to sink into the Pacific Ocean. 
I would be so on board with that episode if that happened. That would, and this was the like the first and first last, last episode, episode of, of Rocket Power show. Ever. Yeah. So again, they do some weird stuff here. Oh, this one, this one gets weird. They have weird interstitials that show up and make literally no sense. I don't know. Did what... you write down? I didn't write down all of Sam's quotes, but I wrote down every interstitial. You know why? Because they Cause were god awful. Because there were two. They were neon, and they were impossible to miss. <laughs> So <laughs> and they never showed bad. up again they showed up twice within the, about five seconds apart from each other and never again uh i feel like what happened was at the beginning of this show if maybe you had medicated and then 11 minutes 12 minutes into this show 15 minutes into the show about the halfway mark like the medication began to wear off and you were just like oh no we didn't medicate enough again <laughs> and then suddenly they were just like weird interstitial bumps and you're just like I think they were just like 30 Ooh. seconds short or like they had frames that needed to be replaced and they just like put these weird things in. But we'll, we'll get there so, in a second. They do some stuff, like some of the plots, uh, they just take weird turns. So in the beginning of this one, which is called Down the Drain, second half of the first episode, Sam and Twister, so Squid and Twister, are just like bouncing on a trampoline. They're like best buddies now. They're just hanging out, bouncing on a trampoline in a, a presumably Rocket's yard and they're looking over yeah. into the Stimpleton's yard where they have a sweet pool, sweet kidney bean shaped pool. And the Stimpletons are uh, giving a tour to Reggie because she's going to be house sitting. And Otto is kind of like creeping around there too. So I didn't, I didn't know what they were going to, I thought they were going to like set it up that the adults were going to leave and then the kids were going to sneak in. No, the kids just literally just trampling themselves into the hedges, destroy the hedges and then fall into the, <laughs> the yard opposite them. And then are just like screwing around the entire time. Yep. Pretty much it. Uh, and and uh, so. Uh, Reggie is house sitting for the Stimpletons, uh, which I want to remind everybody she's in the sixth yeah, grade. She's the oldest, but that's not good. She's in the sixth grade. She is, uh, so we should mention uh, Otto and Twister and Sam are all the same age, right. but Sam and Reggie are in the same grade. Sam is so smart. The other, the other two are a year below right. them, and so. Uh, but Reggie, evidently in everybody's ultimate wisdom is just like she can clearly house sit uh because this family has proven that they can concentrate for more than two seconds on important things like managing a homestead what i really do like though is that she does listen to stimpleton's rules so he goes through all these rules like you have to shower before you go in the pool this pool's full of this many gallons of antibacterial chlorine here's the overly complicated central processing unit or cpu that controls he everything. He really in the house. breaks. He really breaks that down. He, he really, oh god, it's like they really were just like guys. Uh, don't know if you've been around for the last forty years, but there's this thing called a computer. <laughs> like, shut up. I love that it controls the entire house, though. It's like this gaudy bronze, gold-like statue outside. Uh, like like a like a crazy mad scientist control. It's like a panel. copper still. It looks like a it copper does look like still. still. Yeah, it's got like a like a chimney thingy at the top and a red light for whatever reason that goes off. But this thing controls the pool. It also controls everything else in the house, which is an important plot point that will come up later. So as he's explaining how that works, <laughs> Reggie is just like, "Okay, cool. See you later." This is where the weird interstitial comes up. So Sam says something about the CPU. Do you have this one? Uh. Sam's looking at the control is panel. It, it, He's super jazzed about is it. Is it the one that is it the one that says "see ya"? Uh, no, 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 no. So right before the interstitial, Sam, so the kid Sam, has a quote that's like super tech expertise about the CPU. Oh no! What does he, he say? He says, "Oh, it's an ultra terabyte with two mega mil parallel processors." I just cringed so much when I heard that. I cringed. Not even. Not even close. None of those to words how. mean anything when used in that manner. Okay. Now that first weird interstitial comes up. It's the sea. Yeah. yeah. That's when the adults are. So the, uh, the, the Stimpletons uh, are leaving because they have like a, was like a four or five week anger management class. Yeah, something like that. I missed that, but it seemed appropriate. <laughs> it's, like, it's ridiculous. And I mean, it's already been established that it seems sort of like his marriage might be on the rocks from the first, oh, ep- yeah. from the first half of an episode. After he anyway. backhanded her in front of a child. And so it seems like there's some, uh, some things that need to be worked yeah, out. Definitely. So they are, they're taking care of that. So as they're leaving, there's our first interstitial bump as, they're, like, as the Stimpletons are leaving, and it just goes, see ya. see ya. In like a green, like neon, I don't remember the color, but like a neon frame. It fills the whole screen. I thought it was like a weird commercial break, 
but then it cuts right back to the same scene. And then literally a second later, like Reggie says something, she's talking about the pool and they're all like, oh, we got to get in the pool. And they just start uh, taking their clothes off and they're well, going to jump into the pool. Well, Reggie makes the comment. Right. Reggie makes the comment. She goes, you guys need to, you guys need to shower off right. before you get in the pool, acting all serious and repeating the knowledge that, the, or that Merv Stippleton had given yep. to her as a condition for using said pool. And then all of a sudden it just flashes. Psych. Psych. And she does like a backflip. She does a standing <laughs> backflip 20 sweet. feet into the air and then splashes down in this pool. And everybody else is just like, oh, it's on. Yeah, which I mean, to be fair, whatever. You get access to a pool for like four or five weeks. Of course, you're going to dive into it and not care about the rules. What's weird here is that like Sam is apparently their friends now, but he doesn't want to go in the pool because he's afraid it's going to be too cold. So he walks literally like two or three feet into the water and then the boys start making fun of him again. They, they're just yeah. teasing him. Like I did, I, the only thing I really liked about the show was that they kind of got that mentality of like boys that age are just like gross and they don't think about stuff and they're constantly teasing each other about stupid stuff and some people get upset and some people don't and they kind of got that pretty well because Sam is like hypersensitive at this point. They tease him, they basically say he peed in the pool, right? So how does he react? Yeah. He gets out of the, he gets out of he the freaks. pool and is just like, I'll show... I'll show you guys. Uh, I can I can program and I can do anything I want on this computer with its CPU. And uh, like I'll show you. I'll drain this drain pool the and then nobody can swim. And you're just like, okay. It it, the, it didn't feel like the threat was so severe. No, I thought he was going to go a lot more dark, a, a lot darker with it because he he started off like really upset and freaked out. But they think it's a great yeah. idea because now. You don't have a pool anymore, but what do you have? You have an awesome skate park. Uh, yeah. Awesome skate park. So Sam is now uh, like, oh, cool. Uh, okay. Did you get his tech expertise on this one when he's working at the pump? Yeah. He's like, I could just reverse the polarity on the pump. <sighs> that doesn't. That's not how that's that not a works. Thing that, that makes sense. Ever. That's not how that. Not anything. It's not right with like fluid dynamics. It's not right with electrical engineering. It's all very wrong. Nope, it's, it's, it's nothing. They are a sequence of words that when put together yeah. form a sentence, but they are not a scientifically sound or based in any reality sentence nope. that under any given circumstances in any scientific discipline nope. would make a lick of fucking You're teaching sense. teaching kids garbage. But it doesn't matter because they drain the entire pool. Uh, and and <laughs> what's kind of fun with this one is it obviously all goes awry, but where does all that water go to? Uh, instead of going down the drain, it goes all into the Rocket family's <laughs> basement. And this ruins, presumably, their life's uh, collection of garbage down there. And just like at this, at this point, my feeling about this cartoon is that I hope a lot of keepsakes, memories, and irreplaceable items were in that basement and are just gone. Yeah, and they pretty much were. The kids don't care. They just decide they're going to film their skate tricks in the, uh, the drain pool. At one point, Otto gets, quote unquote, too much air lands across the hedge on a trampoline <laughs> and crashes into the garbage, which he thinks is the best thing ever. This is how the kids find out that the pool water actually backed up and went into the basement. And this is the first time, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first time we meet Mr. Rocket Raimundo. That's right. Rem and he was just hanging out back at the shore shack where literally no one was shopping there. It was just his Hawaiian buddy who was sweeping up the joint. And he's like, uh, yeah. you know what? You can handle the rush. I'm going to go relax at my neighbor's pool because that's what I always do when he's out of town. <laughs> Sounds yep. like a real deadbeat, to be honest with you. Yep, he is. I like the pool <laughs> sure hopping idea. Is. I like the pool hopping idea, but not when you're like, you know, 30, 40 year old adult of. And a small business owner. Small business owner and father of children. And yeah. And you have a, and you have two employees one of them is yourself yeah. in said small and there's business. literally an ocean like 10 feet from the place that you own so just go there maybe i'll, I'll, I'll say this yeah. he is setting the example that he has set as a father is exactly what these children are following yeah 100 percent. you can just tell he's a rotten father because he's got rotten kids <laughs> so this sets up kind of like uh. a fun sequence where the kids have to prevent their dad from finding out about the flooded basement so how does that play out for them? Uh, it actually plays out relatively well. Um, like, Dad comes home, and he's like, hey, I'm going to the pool, uh, and I need my, sh my swim trunks in the basement, to which uh, Reggie is up 
and kind of greeting and distracting her dad during this time. Uh, as the other three boys are running over to, I guess, re-reverse the polarity on the pump? Yeah, they're going to, like, F with the CPU and cause it, of course, to go completely chaotic and cause the house to just go insane and start breaking and spitting everything out. Literally, the only interesting thing about this episode so far has been the smart house yeah. and the fact that we are kind of now sort of at that point where we have a lot of those. Yeah. Uh, so that was of interest. Um, but it was very, but it was a very minor note in an episode of just regularly disturbed chaos that you would expect from family of rockets. Pretty much. So they, uh, they go through this whole thing and then finally the dad is just like, all right, well I'm going over. And as he's walking over, you kind of see, it's an interesting shot of how they, they have it set up where you see the pool filling up as the dad is walking ever so much closer to the gate to get in to the point where he gets through the gate. And the pool is all filled yeah, up. Totally fine. And he's like, "Hey, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go swimming right now. Uh, where are, where are all you kids going?" And they are, oh, they're booking they are it. beelining it. They are booking it out of this pool. They're like, "We are done. We have screwed this up enough." Now here's what confused me because everybody was like, "See ya," and then Sam was like, "Nice seeing you again, sir." And I was like, "I just, I just watched the first episode. You never met. You guys never you have, met. You you've met. never talked to each other in your lives. You've been here for 12 minutes and you've never met." So I don't know if they if they aired these out of sequence or what it was, but uh, yeah, they never met. But apparently they're best buds now. Yeah. And then to complete the uh, hilarity of this episode, the Stimpletons return home. Uh, and then is like Violet's yelling at him. She's like, if you keep delaying, we're never going to get there or whatever. Uh, after another yeah. fresh I love that he comes in. back because he needs to check the system back up. He's got to check it. Check that. Check that sweet backup. I do all love right. that he finds that- Raymundo just chilling in his pool, along with like all of his belongings and nostalgia, just like floating in the pool alongside of him. All the stuff that was flushed yeah. out of the basement is now in the pool, and it's just floating and getting waterlogged, and all those keepsakes are ruined forever. Uh, so as they yell at each other, then they both yell at Reggie for whatever reason. They just blame the girl. Assumed it was her yep. fault. This wasn't great. I don't know. This wasn't great. <laughs> That is an understatement. I, I will say it was just like fun, but it wasn't, it wasn't great. But before we get into our opinions of this show, do you have anything, anything from this one to say before we get to our user reviews here? No. <laughs> Nothing at all. We're drained. Drain that no, pool. Just, Drain that swamp. Just a lot of, if you could, if I could uh, deep sigh, but have it be extreme, extreme I would sigh. Deep, I, would, I would definitely extreme sigh right nice. now. Well, we'll cue that up in the soundboard. Would you like to take the loved it or hated it review tonight? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going with Let's loved go it. Loved it. What do you got? I need I need to go contrary to what my my current <laughs> feelings are. So this is from a USC Trojan, um, which is a relatively recent review back in 2011. Yeah, and this it. is called Yeah, I don't either. The California Life. It helps to have grown up in Southern California. A lot of the reviews are right in saying that it is not an overly powerful show. But being a kid in this region is different than anywhere else in the country, especially along the coast, and Rocket Power comes close to capturing it. Rocket Power is very nostalgic for those of us who miss, who miss surfing the summer days away and grabbing a fish taco or two. My favorite character by far was Tito Makani and his Hawaiian wisdom. Every group of kids needs someone to bestow knowledge of life on them, and Tito was that guy and he was directly involved in the best moments of the show. I remember how hard it was to learn to surf, and Sam just couldn't get it. Tito comes along and gives him a gigantic board that was best suited for Sam's frame. He wouldn't have gotten the grasp of surfing that quickly after, but nonetheless, Tito came through again. 10 out of 10 stars. I wish you would have have read that like, like surfer, dude. Like, yeah. Oh, man. I... I don't even like, think I can whoa, muster the energy. Yeah. I, I can't. Ugh. Pitted. Totally pitted. So I, Dave, yeah. I had to love it, which means you had to hate Damn. it. Brah. Brah. Uh, Brah. I'm going to try to pronounce some of these things. This is from Miro Suinitsaki 2 from United States. Got it. Back in 2007. It is a 1 out of 10 stars, and it is titled Non I love Radicalicious. This was also heavily edited. Our last one was heavily edited as well. Here we go. 
<laughs> What's the fun of watching a cartoon about a boy who gets grounded for every little thing he does? It's basically watching a boy get tortured by a man. Go on. Go on. <laughs> this show is lame. The catchphrases are lame. <laughs> Radical. Like, I never heard that before. I don't have an interest in surfing, skating, or anything of the sort. The show is just as lame as a show can get. I wonder if they still air it. I do not recommend the show for anyone without an interest in sports. Even if you do have an interest in sports, watching a little boy get grounded every episode is not entertainment. One out of ten stars. I did not get that a boy was being tortured by a man. There are a lot of things you can say about this show. I did not get torture of children. Except possibly us as the watchers of the show. What about- I definitely felt that I was tortured watching Ooh, this show. Oh boy, so if you don't recommend it, does it get the dip? Uh, you know what? I, I definitely obviously do not recommend this yep. show, which I think is the first Nicktoon that I have uh I, I would not recommend. But because it falls in that Nicktoon status, I would not give it the dip. I think we're we're on the same page. I I came into this one a little feeling a little better about it than I do now. Uh as far as substance goes though, there's not really a whole lot here. So it's it's hard to recommend unless you really need to complete that Nicktoons watch. But like Sean said, because it is part of the Nicktoons canon, I can't give it the dip. It's also got, you know, it, it features uh, minority characters. It features characters we don't often see, which is like, you know, kids in the, the sporting whatever, into, into extreme sports. And the idea is interesting. The execution is just not great. Oh. And I'm hoping that later on they actually got to like include some, some actual like lessons, life lessons and things like that. This is just kind of like jerk kids being jerks, just being kids. It's like kids being kids. And even if you're a kid, why do you want to watch that? So I don't know. Yeah. Not a great start out of the gate for Rocket Power, but it lives to fight another day. Anything else on this one, bud? No, I just want to, I just I want to, I want to put the skateboard in the trunk and I want to put the bike on the bike rack and then just go home and just extreme sigh mm. and then extreme eye roll. Uh, and then extreme eat an entire Ooh, pint of nice. ice cream. You can do that on Twitch. Uh, I actually, yeah. I want to, I want to sell my snowboard. It just dawned on me the other day that I still have it, and I have not gone snowboarding in probably about ten years. So, if anybody <laughs> out there's interested, I guess buy a snowboard. Uh, <laughs> this just turned into like a weird this Craigslist. Is Craigslist cartoons. <laughs> Craig's cast. Yikes! So, buddy, what do you have coming up over the next couple of weeks for our listeners out there? Hey guys, if you're in D.C., Virginia, Maryland, I do live improv comedy with Washington Improv Theater. You can find out more and tickets with dc.org. As always, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Paul Ellis. Fantastic. You can find me on Twitter at Dr. Claw MD. Uh, you can also find me on Collider.com, Nerdist.com, and DaveTrumbor.com. If you're interested in finding out more about the show, you can check out our brand new Patreon page, patreon.com slash Saturday Morning Cartoons. Remember, it's morning with a U. You can also find us on our website, SaturdayMorningCartoons.com. Check us out on Twitter, at MorningTunes. Take a look at Sean's handiwork on our Instagram page. Continue the conversation on Facebook. Keep an eye out on YouTube and listen to us each and every week through iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. As always, you can suggest an upcoming episode through email, SaturdayMorningCartoons at gmail.com. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for Rocket Power. Thank God. We're going to close out this third installment of New Year's yeah, Nicktoons. Man. Two more weeks, two more tunes. And two things that are new for me. I don't. I have not watched either of these. Ooh, it's gonna be a trip. What do we got? Oh man, we have a uh, as told by Ginger. Hmm. Mm. Uh, I really wish that it was actually just like an anthropomorphic piece of like root ginger. I would watch it. <laughs> I would watch the hell yeah. out of it. Um, as if this show, as if Rocket Power was an actual family of rockets, like bottle would rockets, watch. or just. Anything it would anything would have literally been better than what we yep. watched, uh, and then we are going to round out third annual New Year's Nicktoons with Invaders. I know that's a fan favorite out there, but I have not really watched it, so we'll see if I get oh, into it or not. Oh man, I can't believe I can't believe that you've never seen Invaders. I mean, Zone. there's there's some things out there that have just escaped me over the years, just the timing or just interest or lack thereof or doing like life stuff. I don't know, don't know what it is. I'm nervous. It's one of those shows that I really want you to oh, like. Well, now I'm going to hate it on principle. And- Oh, son of a bitch. Yep. Said too much. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Saturday Morning Cartoon. Sean and I are going to go play a round of extreme sports betting. Uh, we will see you next time on Saturday Morning Cartoons. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Pitted. Yeah. Hey, everybody. 
Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform and roll out. <laughs>